And now we can get started. Um, so hello, uh, my name is Alex Friedman. I am the acting planning manager for the city of Tacoma Park. Um, and welcome to our, um, I believe, third edition of uh, sort of my bike safety roundtable chats. Um, I started putting these together periodically when I started with the city um, now about a year and a half ago. And I found that they have been a good opportunity for one, giving a quick snapshot update on all of the bike projects that we're working on, uh, but also a chance to hear from folks about um, issues on the ground. Uh, I work in the city. I am a biker myself. I you know, use Capital Bike Share to get to work often. However, I don't live in the city, so I don't get to see every corner's day-to-day -day, um, experience as a biker or a pedestrian. And that's where um, I'm hoping that these spaces can be useful in both sharing information that we're working on, but also hearing back about things that people are concerned about or generating ideas for things as we look forward. Um, because we're a pretty small group, um, I'd love to do a super quick round of introductions just to say who you are and what brought you to this meeting today. Um, I will kind of go clockwise as my screen presents itself. Um, but uh, Kevin, would you like to start us off real quick? Sure. Uh, Kevin O'Brien, uh, I uh, work at the Washington Area Bicyclists Association. Uh, I think some of my colleagues might have been on uh, last night's version. Um, but uh, live, in, live in the district, um, used to live uh, very close to, to Tacoma Park um, in like the Shepherd, Shepherd uh, Park neighborhood. Um, so very familiar with, with the area, biked a lot around there. Um, and yeah, interested in, in hearing um, about projects and uh, yeah, how we can make bicycling better throughout the region. Awesome. Uh, Mike, you're next on my screen. <clears throat> I'm Mike Caruso. Thanks, Alex. And let me say, Alex, thanks for doing this on like a recurring basis. I really appreciate it. I always appreciate the checking. So, so thank you for that, Alex. Um, I'm Mike Caruso. I've been living in Tacoma Park like eight years. Uh, I'm a bike commuter. I have two small kids. I try to bike everywhere in Tacoma and sort of the regional area that I can. And um, I think there's just like a lot of opportunities for Tacoma to continue to improve its bike infrastructure. So grateful to Alex and the team and congratulations on the acting planning manager role. Um, Thank you. <laughs> just grateful that you're doing this. Thanks, Mike. Um, Council member Hanzak, I think you are next on my screen. Hi, everybody. I don't have great backlight here, but <laughs> um, it's great to be here. Um, yes, yeah, I just I just started in this role for anybody that I think everybody here I haven't met yet, except for Alex. Um, I I uh, am here as a resident of Tacoma Park. I've lived here for 20 years and um, my husband and I both have biked a lot over the years. It kind of depends on the year of our lives in terms of what we're trying to do when we're biking. But we have been we have both been commuters at various points. We live in Ward 5, which is kind of far from the Tacoma Park Metro. But we used to in the olden days before we had three kids, we used to bike to the Metro regularly. Um, or bike to work even. Uh, now we've got three kids at every level of school and going multiple directions. And sadly, we're not biking as much for commuting as we are for um, you know, leisure. So um, anyway, but I, I, I have long-term dreams of, have, of seeing uh, bike safe paths, particularly that connect my ward down to, to Tacoma Park uh, Metro, as well as the sort of the old town. And I know as, as a council member, I am here to represent the interests of my ward, those who are super interested in those particular things, and also connecting us with the new Purple Line development and Silver Spring, uh, some of our, our local schools, such as Silver Spring International Middle School, and, um, uh, um, and, and even Rolling Terrace. We have some of that, but it's not as protected as it maybe could be. So super excited that you're so excited and passionate, Alex. Thanks. Thanks, council member. Um, Claudia, you're next. Hi, sorry, I'm 
logged in two places. Uh, we moved to Tacoma Park um, a year and a half ago. Um, we being, um, I have a son who's at Piney Branch Elementary and we did not own a car until 2020. So we're one of those long-term Waba crazy <laughs> members who uh, have transported all kinds of things by bike. Uh, and uh, getting used to the new neighborhood, I, and I really appreciate how walkable a Tacoma Park is, but as my son starts to bike, the idea of him biking on Carol to get anywhere <laughs> makes me really nervous. <laughs> Uh, and, but we just have narrower streets and narrower sidewalks, so they're kind of fewer low-hanging fruit options. Uh, but I, um, I did hear someone posted on the school listserv about um, a request of the dates from a couple of years ago of a bike um, lane on Maple, and that does seem to make a lot of sense uh, to me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, John, I think you're next. Hi, everybody. My name is John Ryder. Um, I'm a resident of Tacoma Park. I'm also a transportation planner for Montgomery County. I work in multimodal transportation. Um, I'm also a parent of three um, uh, primary school kids. Um, so I live kind of down in the, the bottom corner of the city on Westmoreland. So we, our kids will walk or bike to school. Um, I'm trying to get our younger to to get more get a little bit more powerful so we can get up the hills. But um, you know, as as being an avid cyclist, you know, I find the city fairly comfortable to cycle around for myself. But you know, I'm always thinking about um, how how are my kids going to interact? And you know, somebody brought up riding bikes on Carol. Um, you know, ha having to cross that street to get from where we are to the primary places where my kids are gonna be it is always in the back of our minds. So I'm just here to you know, hear what's going on. I, I kind of know, but um, you know, it's always good to hear it from the inner workings of, of city staff. So I'm happy to be here today. Thanks, John. And um, to round us off, McKenna, do you wanna give a quick introduction? Hi, yes, I'm McKenna. I'm with the city of Tacoma Park. I work in the planning department as well. Um, apologies for not having my camera on. I'm just finishing my lunch, but yes, I'm just here to hear everyone's ideas and thoughts and excited to discuss the bicycles. Well, thanks, McKenna. Um, so what I have planned for today is I made a, a quick PowerPoint presentation with just some summary um, summary slides of kind of the things that we're working on, the big initiatives, where they stand, what their sort of timelines are moving forward. Um, and then um, after going through those and, and sort of inviting questions on things as they come up, um, I wanted to switch to trying to, you know, devote a lot of this time to a more open discussion, um, inclusive of sort of three things. One, I want to give a quick teaser at some of the things that are kind of in my back of the brain pipeline. Um, they're not uh, formal projects yet, but they're things that I have been thinking of and um, I'm, I'm sort of looking to formalize um, coming down the road. Uh, a broader discussion about any sort of concerns or opportunities um, that you all have encountered in, in your experience as bike riders or bike rider adjacent people um, in the city. And then the sort of most targeted question, and, and I'm happy to hear that there's so many folks with kids in the room, is um, I've been trying to think about how to bring more youth voice into our planning and advocacy um, around bike and pedestrian infrastructure. But um, uh, you know, there's a whole suite of challenges that come uh, with trying to engage youth as opposed to adults. And so I'd be really curious to pick some brains about um, avenues and, and ideas that you all might have for that. So just to get those juices rolling um, as I continue to mix up all of my idioms, um, let's jump into this PowerPoint presentation. So give me just a minute to share my screen. All right, um, so again, um, 
My name is Alex Friedman. I'm the Acting Planning Manager for the city and welcome to our roundtable. Um, so uh, I'll go through sort of a full slide of this at a time and then stop and we can sort of dig into any of these as, as they come up. Um, this is really just an overview of some of the broader, bigger projects that we're working on and kind of what their status updates are. So the first and arguably biggest project that we have been working on in the city for years now is the New Ave Bikeway. Um, for those who are new to it, it is a um, multi-directional, mostly protected bike lane that goes along New Hampshire Avenue. Um, the original intention is that it connects the Tacoma Langley Transit Center and the Crossroads Shopping District down to DC. Um, we divided it and by we, I mean my predecessors, when they initiated this, divided it into sections to help with sort of funding mechanisms because grant funds have been instrumental for pushing this project forward. So sections A and B are the original sections that were funded. Uh, those connect Holton Lane down to Poplar Avenue. That's kind of like the middle, um, the middle 50% uh, of the trail. Um, I'm excited to share that those are in 100% design process right now, which um, for those new to this sort of design process language means that they are um, all but finalized. They're just getting approvals from utilities and uh, all of the crossing jurisdictions to make sure that the designs meet all of the standards and expectations of um, the State Highway Administration, which maintains New Hampshire, of the Maryland National Capital Parks and Planning Commission, which controls a lot of the sort of green space along the route uh, and, and so forth. So um, section A is running a little behind schedule. It's supposed to be done this winter. It's probably gonna be done next fall. And section B is running ahead of schedule. It was supposed to be done next fall and will probably be done this spring. Um, so, as we start to queue up everything to get to 100% design, once we have those in hand, we can start looking for construction funds to put it in, uh, which is the final big step. Then the exciting new development is that we received a grant this fall to begin the preliminary concept designs or 30% designs for what we are calling section D. It is the southernmost section, it connects from Poplar Avenue to the DC border. Um, and so for that reason, I've been calling it the district connector to try and jazz it up a little bit. Um, but the uh, intention originally with the route was that it, the trail would probably connect straight down New Hampshire all the way to Eastern Avenue. But um, we've, we've deviated from that plan because the right of way, the public right of way that we have sort of full control over as a city from Poplar down to Eastern is extremely narrow um, to the point where the sidewalk is pretty much the only width that that width of sidewalk is all that the city has to play with. And I don't even know if that is fully up to ADA compliance and width along the full section. Um, but that means that if we were to try to expand that width of path to be more than what it is now it would require either some really complicated negotiations and possibly purchases from private property owners on one side or trying to get the State Highway Administration to give up substantial lane space on New Hampshire, which um, while that is our dream in the long run, um, we have not gotten any indication that there is a sort of viable near term path forward with that. So, um, but in addition to the right of way, once you get to Eastern Avenue, um, there isn't actually any bike infrastructure that continues down New Hampshire into DC. So it's kind of would be like a bike path to nowhere. Uh, so our, our alternative that we are pursuing is to connect this final section through the Pinecrest or Hell's Bottom neighborhood um, up to Kansas Avenue uh, in DC, which is where there are some existing bike lanes. Um, on top of that, DC has fully designed out and is waiting to fund, I think, in their 2026 capital improvements plan, um, a total revamp of Eastern Avenue along Tacoma Park, which would feature 
by um, sidewalks on both sides, bike lanes, uh, reduced number of driving lanes. Uh, so theoretically, this could all kind of like tee up at the same time, which would be really neat. Um, the This Saturday, tomorrow, um, myself and anyone who would like to join are welcome to come out and do a site walk of this, uh, the potential routes through this neighborhood. Um, I'm also doing this for another project on the other side of town a little earlier in the day, and we'll do a bike ride between the two. So for anyone who is interested um, in, we're just getting started on section D and the um, part of the effort to do this site walk is to really start introducing community voice early on in the process so that when our contractor is starting to do design work that it, it is starting from a place of some community feedback. And then the, that sort of preliminary design is expected to be finished this summer. Um, it's on a grant that has a timeline. So, you know, in full transparency, it will be done by the end of June, whether we're, we're, uh, whether or not we're there. Um, and if, if for some reason it doesn't feel like by June we've gotten to a place where we're totally happy, we'll kind of put a pin in it and look for current grant funding to continue it um, in the next cycles in a more robust way. Then a quick update on what I've been trying to call the Great Bike Rack Install of 2022. Um, it start, it's, we've hit the Great Bike Rack part. We haven't quite hit the install part. Um, we earlier this year purchased 54 um, hoop style bike racks and one public fix it, sort of a bike maintenance station uh, that would add secure bike parking to, across um, all six wards with special focus on getting bike parking at the um, public parks, city owned public parks, as well as making sure there was some bike parking close to shops in all of the business districts. Um, this, we were successful in kind of getting everything, but there have been some challenges with um, capacity for installation um, with public works and also around some contracts related to concrete, which um, became really expensive. Uh, and a lot of these would require a conc concrete pad to, to make sure that they are secure. Um, so uh, the city is kind of working on, on them. They are not forgotten. They are just a little bit delayed beyond when we were hoping. Um, I am excited though, because particularly in Ward 6 up by the crossroads, there is not a lot of public right of way to play around with. And so we're, we're sort of piloting something new, which is developing contract agreements with private properties, the large shopping center private properties to install bike racks on their property free of charge um, to make sure that that is an available asset. Um, we've gotten two properties on board so far and we're, we're still working on the other ones. Um, and to the question, how many bike racks have been installed? So far as zero have been installed <laughs> of our 54. So it's um, not where I hoped we'd be. Uh, my dream was that they were all gonna be installed before the end of bike month last May, but we're, uh, we're working on it. Um, before I move on, any quest other questions about the new app bikeway or our sort of bike rack installation plan? I have a question. Sure. Uh, it's a specific, uh, apologies in advance, it's specific to Ward 5. Um, since a lot of our shopping districts uh, for Ward 5 actually sit outside of the city, limits. Um, do any of those 54 bike racks sit sit like in the Long Branch area uh, by chance? So unfortunately, because of jurisdictional capabilities, we can't install things outside of the city borders. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking to try and, and fit something in on the Tacoma Park side a little um, corner. Um, it's a little tricky because it's mostly kind of tight parking lot and there's not a lot of extra space sitting around. So um, this first round of 54 hoops um, did not end, end up including any spaces up in that one little complex. Um, what my hope is though, is that as 
uh, purple line development kind of picks up a little bit more there, uh, that there will be some more momentum both from the county and from the folks at the purple line. And paired with a lot of the new grant funding coming in from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act and a variety of other um, federal sources that will create more opportunities for um, what in this case will probably be um, bike parking that could be dropped in quickly, more accessible on the Silver Spring side of things. Mm -hmm. And for the Tacoma Park side of things, probably would need to look into a slightly more engineered solution where where there's not existing space, we would have to make space with like a concrete pad or something to that effect. But okay. it's not um, it's not off the radar. We just uh, couldn't. No, I understand. I, it's obviously it going to be. Hopefully, it'll actually be one of the biggest nexus points for the city, even to to focus on because we want to get people off the purple line and into our neighborhoods and and the vice versa. So I mean, it it, it should be a mega focus for yeah solving for. But I agree. I mean we great if we can transfer funds from the county too. So thanks. Really? Yeah, sure thing. Mike, what's up? Alex, just a question for those business owners in, in Ward 5 along that stretch there, can they reach out and request, you know, as you mentioned, to, to have an install on their private property? Um, they <clears throat> are definitely welcome to reach out. Um, I, I don't think that any of them will um, just because they um, don't have the same kind of like wide sidewalks and walkways that um, over in the crossroads area that there are and parking's pretty tight as it is. That said, um, there's been, you know, a couple of vacancies up there and as uh, those fill up, um, I think that there, and again, with like the purple line coming in, I think there is going to be a new energy and focus uh on that corner of town um and then a little further south and like erie center there's already a couple of bike racks installed although they're not they're not optimally located but for now they're kind of uh sufficient um but yeah i i think if if there were business owners that were like i'd love to give up a parking spot and put in some bike racks we would be i would be happy to jump on that um, it's a hard, it's been a hard sell. I've actually been surprised that um, in conversations with multiple property owners, uh, it seems like there is not an assumption that people would ride bikes to get to their shops and that the people who would be riding bikes like aren't potential customers, um, which sort of uh, baffles me a little bit, knowing that in particular, um, as we move towards the sides of the city that border Prince George's County and Silver Spring, where there's um, generally speaking much lower car ownership, that I think bike infrastructure would be not just a asset for existing people who are joining, but a draw for customers who don't feel like they can park their bike somewhere securely right now. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's data that supports that, you know. Bike parking drives drives business, but yeah, totally get that's not their focus. But thanks for bringing that up. Um, all right, I'm gonna jump to the next next tranche, and uh, you know we can always come back to things if they come up. So um, we have a, an unexpected guest celebrity in the room um, uh, <laughs> to. Um, I'm not going to ask you to comment on this unless you want to add any details, but the county right now is going through a bikeway branding plan that the city is participating in as one of the three independent municipalities. Um, uh, so we're present on um, the committee that is sort of guiding the design process, and um, I believe, and, and this, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, John, um, but I ex think we're expected to see um, something in hand uh, by this coming spring or summer. Um, but the purpose behind this plan is to create a standardized set of, um, a standardized brand um, for bikeways across Montgomery County so that when someone is riding their bike on the different levels of Montgomery County bike infrastructure, that there is a consistent sense of wayfinding, 
a consistent sense of place and a consistent understanding of the style of amenities that you can expect to find. Um, so uh, this wouldn't necessarily be rolled out um, come spring 2023, but um, once it's finalized, the city can start looking into ways to implement that into how we install new bike infrastructure as well. You pretty much nailed it, Alex. Um, we're we're hoping. <laughs> so you know the the most visible parts of this plan will be uh, what Alex mentioned: this kind of unified logo and color and sign style for all of the bikeways within Montgomery County. Um, but on top of that, you know, I um, this you know, this project is something very different from anything I've ever done in my planning career, it's very much marketing, which is a completely kind of new space for me. But the, the way that I kind of look at this is this is, um, you know, we know we have a great product in uh, the bikeway system that we're trying to build in Tacoma Park in Montgomery County. Um, this will be the way that we sell it to people. This is the way we get people to get interested and use these bikeways. Um, so, you know, folks that live in, Tacoma Park, you know, you see tons of people riding their bikes around. Um, the number of cargo bikes <laughs> in the city over the last year or so, I think has gone up by about 5,000%. Um, you know, those are the exact folks that we're, we're looking to entice to use this system, potentially branch out and then become advocates for our system. You know, tell their friends how great it is. Um, and then again, we, we want to, people to feel comfortable, whether they're in Tacoma Park, Bethesda, uh, Gaithersburg, to, you know, understand what kind of experience they can get riding on our bikeways and know that it'll be similar any part of the county. You know, I, I always uh, uh, attribute it to uh, the inter interstate system. If you're driving on the interstate in Maryland, California, uh, Florida, it, it's going to be a fairly similar similar experience. Traffic will be a little bit different, but in general, you know what you're getting. And at that, I'll, I'll stop talking. <laughs> Thanks, John. Um, the other newest grant that we have in our, uh, our portfolio is I, um, we received a technical assistance grant from the Regional Planning Organization, the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments to begin the design process um, or create concept designs or 30% designs for an upgrade of the Metropolitan Branch Trail. Um, the Metropolitan Branch Trail is a multi-jurisdictional bike path that goes, when it will, when it is completed, it will go from about Union Station all the way up to Silver Spring. Um, a lot of it follows the right of way of the Red Line Metro. Um, train tracks. And Tacoma Park was one of the first legs of the trail to be completed, I think now pushing 20 years ago. Um, however, it also hasn't been updated substantially since then. So um, by today's standards of comfortable bikeway, it is narrow. Um, the pavement is cracked substantially in a number of places. And uh, you see that <laughs> that transition quite starkly um, when you look at the section that DDOT, um, the district just completed like, immediately to the south um, of the trail, which uh, butts up against our section and goes from really smooth, wide, and beautiful to kind of narrow and, and bumpy. Um, so we're beginning this design process. Uh, tomorrow, our morning session, which will be from 11 to noon, uh, will be a, a, a walk through of this site as well for open to all community members. Um, uh, from 11 to 12, we'll do that. Then we'll ride over as a group for anyone who wants to ride on a bike or people can meet us there um, to the second location to go do the Section D District Connector uh, walkthrough as well. Um, also, it is within the public works uh, plans, capital plans for this year to do some spot improvements where the pavement is cracked right now. 
um, because we won't have a full revamp design of this for probably a couple of years based on sort of our grant cycling. Uh, so it it hasn't happened yet, but it it is on their list and they they have committed to doing it. So um, I think like many things, there's just backlogs galore and uh, renegotiations, of, particularly of pricing for materials, which the costs have just been fluctuating wildly. So it, it's been delaying a number of projects that I've been working on in particular. But these um, designs, these preliminary concept designs will be done um, uh, this summer as well. And then kind of our biggest and most recent uh, rekindling of a project is um, what we're now calling the Maple Avenue Connectivity Project. It used to be known as the Maple Avenue Complete Streets Project. Got a bit of a name rebrand in part because in the circles of grant funding, there's a sort of very specific uh, interpretation of what the phrase complete streets means. It's a bit of a, it is not trademarked, but it, it has a sort of tight brand around it in some grant making circles. And so by renaming this, it actually opened us up to more funding opportunities. So um, it's, it's heart and nature are not dramatically different, but it does have a new name now. Um, but just yesterday, the grant agreement was executed um, by the state for funds to get 100% designs completed for this roadway, in addition to a feasibility study to look at the um, creating improved bike and pedestrian crossing infrastructure at the bridge over Sligo Creek um, on Maple Avenue. So the um, this project, I say rekindling because uh, it has already started or it, it last year received a grant um, to get it to 30% designs, which were finished up right about the time that I was onboarding with the city. And the initial concept, 30% designs, um, I think basically within the time that the grant allotted, it, it raised a lot of big sticky issues that didn't have full time to be totally worked through in their fullest form. Um, and so I think the design that we sort of ended up with at 30% left kind of most people a little unhappy around the edges. So part of what I built into the funding request for this grant is to take the designs that we had that, you know, were. I have no uh, no critique of the firm that put them together. It was really, I think, um, a time constraint that we did not anticipate needing to be engaging with as much. Um, but basically, the funds now under this grant are to step back a few paces, revisit the 30% designs before starting to advance them further down the line. Um, and for those kind of relatively new to this, process staging of these kinds of projects, um, it can get a little jargony, so I apologize, but the sort of big landmarks are usually a 30%, uh, which is sort of like the first round, we're putting all the ideas on the board, we're kind of erasing some things out to try and get the rough sketch of what we want in this space. Then those typically advance to 60 or 65% um, designs, which really start to solidify the core components of what, what a design looks like. And then much of the work from 60 to 100% is really just the fine tuning and the technical analyses to make sure that the, the building documents, the construction documents that are generated from these are, are technically accurate and surveyed and precise, um, that all of the permits are, are you know, collected for various things that all the sign offs or different agencies are signed off on. So um, this first stage is really about um, creating the, the vision and the broad strokes, and then it will start to become more crystallized from there. But I wanted to, um, so this grant is a, a two year grant and we just executed the contract. So we now have to go through the RFP process of um, getting a contractor on board, we probably won't start, um, we will probably won't be able to bring them on board for a couple months at least, because um, I don't think we're going to get an RFP out before the new year. But I just wanted to cue that up that there is more coming down the pipeline for this. Um, we're really excited. 
um, it, it pairs up nicely with a lot of the, um, the work that has been done on the um, minor master plan amendment process that the county has been running in the city. They've done a lot of outreach to the large multifamily buildings on Maple Avenue, and a lot of people have, have been giving feedback that the infrastructure on Maple Avenue just doesn't feel safe enough. Um, it's, it's a really busy corridor for students uh, walking to the various public schools. It's a really busy corridor for all of the residents that live there. Um, and of course, it's a connection between Sligo Creek and um, all of the sort of business amenities of Old Tacoma and, and DC. So uh, it is a project that I'm really excited to get going on. Um, any thoughts or questions on these? How could we learn more about what the maple, the 30% plans look like on maple? And pardon me for being so ignorant, but I, I it's, yeah. It's like I said, that piece has been such a big dream of mine. Um, I've ridden that road, I don't know how many times, with my kids, without my kids. Um, and I always thought maybe I'd do a community project actually to survey the buildings um, and learn how many people that are parking on the road, for example, really, really need that parking. I presume that that's one of the um, <clears throat> spaces. I'm just gonna speculate. I, could you speak to that a little bit actually? How much is how much participatory action has taken place on us, uh, excuse me, on Maple to hear from those who use those parking spaces uh, about potentially the loss of some parking spaces? Uh, yeah, and I that's a that's great question. Of, I, that's probably been the number one hang up I've had about even even advocating for it. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so uh, again, I started right as this first um, iteration of the project was wrapping up. So I wasn't there in person for these pieces, but I think across the whole project, there were some, some sticky issues um, on the flatter Northern part of Maple. Um, I think parking came up as one of the, the primary sticking points and in that first analysis, there really wasn't a lot of deep inquiry into how parking is allocated in the multifamily buildings, who is using the parking spaces on the properties versus on the street. Um, and that is something I want to um, rectify as we move forward because, um, you know, I recognize that the needs for parking in such sort of a densely housed area, um, especially for families that are maybe living with uh, multiple generations in their households, that there are needs for parking that might not be the same as in other parts of the city. And I also want to make sure that people aren't saying that I really need to park on the street, even though there's empty spaces in our parking lot just because of like maybe maybe we can work with building owners to adjust policies so that parking is more reasonably or equitably distributed or perhaps we can look at other opportunities for um you know putting parking in I've, I've heard concerns about like commercial vehicles for example um looking into some of the specifics around where the hang-ups so instead of just looking at it writ large as like parking or no parking, we can kind of get into a more nuanced conversation because I don't think that happened last time. And I think that became a real sticking point for some folks that um, I just think we haven't taken the time to really dig into more deeply. So that's my plan. And, um, and then looking to build onto some of the outreach that's been done for the new, um, for the minor master plan, which was um, door to door canvassing of the buildings. Um, I think they're planning to do another round of that for the minor master plan. And I'm gonna try and insert a few questions um, on their knocking route related to this more specifically. If I, can, if I can talk to you about that later or now, just, but I wanna tell in front of everybody too, just some of the other things that um, come to mind are, you know, when there is bike to school day, you can see pretty clearly and I know from my ward too, just we have really deep poverty and the buildings are, you know, all rent, rent stabilization for the most part. And um, 
there a lot of the people living a lot of the kids living in in the buildings don't know how to ride bikes have never ridden a bike um i've had bikes actually taken off of my front porch because kids are so desperate to have wheels um and it's really sad it's really sad because there aren't a lot of resources here um, and i don't even know how many of the buildings have bike uh cages somewhere inside the building if, even if a kid were to get a bike uh, it's really so i wonder i wonder how many uh, other resources and i'd be happy to work with you on this too to try to get some grants to maybe explore uh getting helping kids learn to ride bicycles and or making sure there were some distribution efforts even even to sort of begin the dialogue to if we're constructing bike lanes right in front of the, the multifamily buildings, I think it, it doesn't, it's going to rub people really badly if the vast majority of the people living in the building, in fact, aren't riding the bikes, which, like I said, just as you can really see it on bike to school day when kids are almost being like, it's, it's, it's almost a dog and pony show. I'm sorry to say sometimes as you get near the end of Maple, because the kids are not able to ride the bikes to school, actually, they don't have them. So Anyway, um, be interesting to rally some resources around that. And I would be very keen to support you in that or even help write a grant or two. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I would love to yeah. talk more about that um, anyway, yep. and, you know, perhaps offline. But um, yeah, yeah, I just thought I'd lay that out in front of this group because everyone's such a big advocate. And yeah, um, and there's I think really it's big beautiful. equity underlying issues that we just need to wrap our heads around. And I, I see it keenly in my ward. Absolutely. And I I should add to these things too that we um just brought on a new safe routes to school coordinator the role's been a little um uh, mostly vacant for the last almost year now um so i'm excited to be bolstering up um felicia hutchinson's her name she's going to be kicking that up back into gear um and part of that is our, our most recent safe routes to school grant includes funds for a fleet of training bikes for each of the elementary schools. Um, so that kind of educational component, I'm, I'm hoping will sort of be building up um, as well as funds for a feasibility study for a traffic garden, which is a, um, uh, it's sort of like those carpets you see in like a kindergarten classroom. That's like a map of the city with all the different road infrastructure. Um, except like big and like in a schoolyard or in a parking lot. Um, so it lays out a, a sort of a manufactured roadway of sorts that has road markings and crosswalks and stop signs and things that you can uh, set up to create a little route or set of routes for um, people learning to ride a bike to practice, not only engaging with the basic skills of a bike, but also Kind of the basic road infrastructure too and what it means to do that so those are also things in the pipeline um and uh yeah let's let's keep talking about that offline too um i want to be respectful of time i know that we sort of officially have 15 minutes left so i'm going to kind of open this to the broader the broader world of the conversation i want to have um to just kind of make make it freestyle from here out um other than I, um, to mention before fully opening that book, that the two things in the pipeline sitting in the back of my head that aren't fully formed yet, but I would like to um, form more fully are uh, looking at um, better safety upgrades for the intersection of Flower and Garland, which even the satellite map has better infrastructure right now than exists there at present, because there was some road work done and the north leg of this intersection no longer has any crosswalk lines and the striped section is uh, even more faded than you see it now. This is where the Sligo Creek Trail crosses Flower Avenue. And um, there was just uh, not at this exact intersection, just down the road at the intersection with Sligo Creek Parkway, there was a crash, um, I guess maybe two months ago. This is a place that gets lots of bike and foot traffic. And um, I've, I've heard from multiple folks over, over this past year that um, it just doesn't feel like it's very clearly marked that this is a place where um, both riders and cars can expect that this is a, a regular crossing. So that's in the back of my head. Um, also Grant Avenue from the middle school down to the community center. Um, I've been in conversations with the principal at the middle school about um, 
regularly observing students, particularly on bikes, in conflict with cars during drop, um, mostly school release time period. Um, there was one student who was struck by another student on an electric scooter. Fortunately, everyone's okay. There's just scrapes and bruises, but um, it uh, revealed that perhaps we need to look at some ways to kind of encourage more caution, particularly at the bottom of Grant, right where it's coming into the community center, because it's, it's easy to pick up a lot of speed. Um, and there's just a lot of people coming and going and crossing and talking with friends and maybe not always paying attention. And how can we um, make it so that uh, if things happen, they don't result in injury? So those are the things percolating in the back of my head. Um, but I'm I'm otherwise here to open the conversation to any concerns, opportunities, or things you want to discuss, but also... Um, as I had said prior, if you have any ideas for bringing youth into the conversation around um, bikes and pedestrian infrastructure more, I would love to hear those as well. So I, I see the, the podium. Uh, Alex, I'm happy to kick things off, if that's all right. Yes, please, yeah. First off, let me just say thanks again for, for organizing the roundtable. So grateful just to like have this time to sort of engage with you. I, I have sort of three things I'll say really quick. And the first yeah. I've mentioned before, and I'll say it again. You know, I appreciate like all of this work that you and the city are doing to put in these projects and the projects are totally awesome. I do think that there is a, I continue to think there's an opportunity to be more sort of strategic and thoughtful at sort of the citywide level and maybe seeing if there's any appetite at the council to do like a citywide bicycle master plan that would be complementary to the county plan, complementary to sort of connectivity points outside the city and just allow for sort of like a longer term planning for like how all these projects tie in together and how they work and sort of um, where we'll be going in five years and 10 years. So that, that's the first thing I wanted to mention just as something to sort of think about council member. I don't know if that's something that's been on your mind. The, the second point I wanna mention is you know, I think there's like a really great low hanging fruit opportunity for like having the city focus on maintenance of, of bike, existing bike infrastructure in the city. You know, Alex, you mentioned the MBT and in addition to sort of the, the concrete opportunities to fix, um, you know, there's just like general sort of maintenance opportunities, you know, clearing leaves, cutting back the trail. Like if you go on the MBT as, as we'll go on tomorrow, you know, the foliage there has grown in many points to almost like halfway across the trail. So it's, it's sort of unusable if you want to cross with somebody on a bike. And I'm sure that's not, I won't speak to other areas of the city, but I, I ride that every day to work. It's just sort of noticeable. So just like a focus on maintenance would be a great way for the city to signal to residents that like, this is a priority for us. Um, and the very last point, and then I'll, I'll, I'll go back on mute is just on your question on engaging youth. You know, there's this huge movement now around doing bike buses where um, somebody organizes like um, a bunch of kids and gap to gather at certain points and go from that point A to the school in the morning or afterwards and they gather together and there's some sort of safety points at intersections and whatnot to keep them safe as they go and they all ride their bikes together. Um, if you Google bike bus, it shows up. There's a guy out at West, Coach Balto, that's been doing this. I feel like it'd be a great way to just sort of like rally kids and get them to kind of chat about bike infrastructure. That's my three points. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Those are great. I, I really appreciate you um, saying those things. Claudia, I see your hands up. Yeah. So I just had one um, minor thing of, because you had mentioned the middle school. And when you were talking about the middle school, you didn't actually mention a minor thing that occurred to me when you mentioned the middle school. So when we, we live in a way, so my son's not in middle school, but we have activities that we go to the middle school and he went to summer school there. So when we bike up from Grant, if you're coming from downhill and you want to get into the middle school property, there's no way to do, because if you go there when school's starting, when we, he was at summer school, like you, you're not supposed to go to the entrance because that's only for buses. Like we were waved away from there. So we were waved into where cars were dropping off. Uh, and I mean, for his age, which is not middle school, I would just want it, like, you know, uh, the, the sidewalk to actually 
have a slant down and be able to just jump up on the sidewalk because the the bike parking is uh, next to the sidewalk. So uh, just putting that out there uh, about that that just specific thing to do with so motorcycle. sorry to just be clear the when riding to school on a bike mm -hmm. the the riders are discouraged from using that main entrance because it's where like uh the buses are, are entering. yeah so when you so when you if you're coming from the rec center mm -hmm. and you're going uphill and then the school's on your right so there's no the, there's no curve in the sidewalk to get on the sidewalk and get in the way of the pedestrians getting there. Right. So you have to go with all the traffic. And so the traffic, you have a whole bunch of, you know, cars that are streaming in right. um, on the side towards Piney Branch. And then the side that's towards the school is supposed to be buses only. And we were waved away from that. Now, I don't really want to be in the middle of nut buses or <laughs> or cars during drop off but there's basically there's no good way aside from saying like well get off your bike and now go to get on the sidewalk uh to get to to get to the bike parking in front of the front entrance well that's really good to know thank you so if you're looking at the middle school that's just a very specific thing yeah we're also looking at um turns out that the middle school is not a designate designated school zone that roadway in front of it on um, Grant. Um, the two elementary schools have designated school zone markings on the road. Um, so that um, we as we've been looking at ways to implement a safer corridor around the school, um, looking at both roadway markings that are cross higher visibility crosswalks, potentially looking into transforming into a, a proper school zone where it would be 15 mile per hour speed limits and um, more signage uh, about. Um, those are all things that we're kind of playing around with in the so back of our with mind. That, with those, would the speed thing come with a bump or? Potentially. Okay, because um, the signs by itself, obviously. Right, I mean, signs <laughs> alone um, are not gonna, gonna fix the problem, but um, looking, you no know, speed bumps are an option we could look into raised crosswalks as an option. Um, there's sort of a lot of different kinds of interventions that we'd need to, uh, you know, kind of tease out more before we committed to one thing. But I have a, a second thing uh, since speed bumps. So moving from DC to Tacoma, our area of DC did not have, we just had potholes. So that was natural, right? Um, but uh, the speed bumps, like the ones on Maple on a bike, they're just, terrible Horrible. so <laughs> so just as new speed bumps are put in i just would hope that there's something that would still slow me down but not be something that i'm afraid i'm gonna fall off my bike if i go too fast by mistake because my son has done that he bumped up he he fell off of one he was learning it was not a big deal but um, i think some of our speed bumps could be um better shaped for other vehicles yeah i would agree yeah, just that. having the same thought those those double bump speed bumps are murder for kids who are new to riding bikes um you know like you said whether we divert to more of a speed pad or speed hump or at least providing like a bike channel if we are going to do those double double hump style um but yeah the those those current designs are rough on kids and we we too have had some kids take some pretty nasty spall spills over those things. Oh. Yeah. oh, thank you, John, also for sharing the links to the Maple Avenue Connectivity Project. Um, the part of your the question I didn't answer earlier was that um, we have a web page for each of our large, larger projects, um, sort of the city controlled projects. And um, I try my best to put as much information up there as possible, including for Maple Avenue, um, there is uh, all of the the preliminary designs that have been crafted so far are posted to there. And as the grant kind of gets going, that web page will flesh out a little bit more too. If anybody else wants to speak, I won't I won't speak anymore because I'll I can probably find you later, Alex. But is is anyone else trying to speak? No, um, I, 
I was just going to say, in terms of youth engagement, um, the police are also looking for youth engagement right now, too. And we were just chatting about that. And I was just thinking about how, uh, I guess, one thing to put on your radar is, is just please remember that the kids that are in Ward 5 are all going to different schools. Um, and so we, we need to try to engage them as well, especially in this like um, bike safety issue, because it's we, we have to connect to Silver Spring to get to our, our schools, Rolling Terrace and Silver Spring International Middle. Um, and some of that, the purple line might solve, but some of it wouldn't. I, I think it would be incredibly cool to be able to um, get them to uh, do bike, you know, what you were, what did you call them, bike, bike buses. <clears throat> I think that would be really neat in our neighborhood. Um, and we don't have a lot of parents who have the time or bandwidth to say lead those because I was thinking about leading them myself even um, but it would be really neat if we could get something organized across the city to go to all the different schools and just more than just bike to school day but actually have a pot you know pod of buses sufficient adults and such and work on those um, just without without more infrastructure just kind of trying to figure out how we can make it work um, there was a question directed at me but I will maybe I'll, I'll, we can talk offline about that Thanks. Oh, and I'm sorry. I was going to say that the, if you, like a youth advisory council might be really neat. And I was encouraging the police to come out to, we have one or two major bus stops here where about 40 kids get on at a time. Uh, it'd be a great place to come and try to recruit a youth representative for the, um, for the bike and pedestrian safety work. I think the committee is still in existence and I'm sure we could get one or two reps if we come out and recruit at the bus stops. Yeah, the um, I think what later became known as the Complete and Safe Streets Committee was actually formally disbanded um, at the beginning of this past year because I think they sort of felt that their their work was done. Um, obviously, the work of roadway safety is never you know we will never hit a point where we're like check we've done it all, but um, but I think that bringing in more sort of like formalized youth roles is a really good idea. Um, we have a youth council uh, that I, last year, I think it was kind of the first post-pandemic year that the council was active and it it was harder to get, aired, um, get screen time with them. Uh, but I think that this year, um, an interest of mine is, is really trying to build them into our processes more again too, because um, They've already signed up to be on an advisory governing body. So there's already a certain level of interest in that regard. Um, I want to honor that it is now 1.30. So we've kind of hit the formal uh, end of our allotted time. But if there were any sort of last questions or thoughts people wanted to toss out, um, I'm also happy to hang out for a few extra minutes if, if folks want to linger and chat about any other things. Um, so are there any sort of like final pieces that people wanna throw into the pot? I was just gonna add, uh, it sounds like y'all are working in conjunction with, you know, across jurisdictional lines and we just like thumbs up it, like keep doing that. Um, you know, roadways, nobody, you know, you don't really always know when you've crossed jurisdictional lines on the road, shouldn't feel that way for, for bike facilities either. Um, and the better we can sort of, you know, coordinate across lines and, and ensure that we don't have projects that, you know, uh, go to nowhere for the time being, um, but to make sure, right. And it helps push, put pressure on, on each, right. It helps, um, you know, go each jurisdiction to be like, oh, well, we don't want to be the ones, you know, with this gap. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and, and, and fill that, you know, make sure that we're holding up our end. Um, so yeah. Love the love that coordination um, and hope hope that we can continue that. Thanks, Kevin. Well, um, as the sort of uh, closing logistics, um, I'm going to take all the notes that I collected from our conversations today, consolidate them with the notes from last night's session, and then I'll post those online on the city, um, on our Bikeways webpage uh, for folks to. Uh, check in on, see what we talked about in our previous roundtable meetings. Um, but then I um, want to make sure that I always am available to you um, to reach out to. I 
uh, I'm always happy to field a phone call or, or an email or uh, meet up for a coffee and talk um, because uh, these are issues that I care a lot about. I'm really grateful that you've taken the time to engage with them also, especially in the middle of a work day. And um, so thank you all for participating and, and continuing to um, you know, keep us on our toes, keep the city accountable and, uh, and push for a, a safer, better bike network. So I really appreciate it. Um, I'll stick around for a couple of minutes, but I'm gonna end the recording now and, uh, and wish those who need to jump off a very